One of the most universally praised things about Persona 5 is the UI design. If you don't know what I mean by a UI or user interface, essentially it's the means of communication between the user, in this case the player, with the game. This could include menus or heads-up displays, or HUDs for short. You could have a very boring, run-of-the-mill form as your user interface, or you can make it look good. But I'm sure you've heard every game critic, artist, and graphic designer talk about Persona 5's style to death by now, and how it looks like it's straight out of a comic book. Something that I never realized until recently is that a lot of Megami Tensei games actually have nice interfaces. When it comes to the world of RPGs, interface is extremely important, because 90% of the time the player is going to be looking at it. Now listen, I'm no artist. I'm not an expert when it comes to this stuff, but I have taken digital art courses and took a visual interface class, and I primarily play RPGs as my genre of choice, so this kind of thing actually sort of appeals to me. Now, I'm not gonna go over every single mainline Persona or other spin-off game, because there are just way too many of them. I also have not played every single Mega Ten game, so I can only speak for the ones that I've played. In this video, I'm just gonna go over a few noteworthy entries that I feel deserve more praise. These are in no particular order, and these aren't necessarily my top picks. Let's start with the OG Shin Megami Tensei for the Super Famicom. This probably isn't the first game you would think of in terms of UI and HUD design. It's not so much that it's anything fancy, but rather I feel like it's worth mentioning just because of how effective it is. The actual dungeon crawling only takes up like half the screen, while the bottom half is taken up by the HUD, displaying your character's statuses, as well as the mapper widget. You have the moon phases, as well as the direction you're facing and your maka in the top left corner. It's cluttered for sure, but once you realize how easily the game transitions between the dungeon crawling, going straight into the battle interface, you start to realize how efficient it is. The enemy appears and the battle starts, done. Going into the pause menu is as easy as a single button press and it just hovers above and works off everything that's already there. In concept, this might sound really boring, but it surprises me how well they were able to make it work. A large part of it is the smooth transitions and attack animations, but another part of it is the expressive descriptors for the actions taken in battle. MC slashes! Crap! They dodged! Whoa! Oncot is okay! Guns blazing! SMT1 is far from being my favorite mainline game, but it was pretty damn impressive for its time. Speaking of mainline, let's talk about Shin Megami Tensei 4. One that more casual players might have experience with. Again, it's not so much about how it looks, this time it's more about how user-friendly and organized it is. Just like SMT1, you're always able to see the status of your character in demons at all times. But since the game was made for the 3DS, you actually have another screen to dedicate to that shit instead of compromising one screen. The game lets you toggle between the full-sized status panels for your stock and current party, or a more compact version, which I personally prefer. All the menu options have neat little icons clearly indicating what's what. It really makes the most of that tiny bottom screen. It's almost like you're actually Flynn looking down at your comp, now that I think about it. The only complaint I really have about it is the lack of a manual search for fusion. Other than that, I'd say it's near perfect. Okay, the last time I talked about Mainline for too long, someone went into the comments and timestamped where I started talking about Persona shit. So, let's just get into that now. I've always thought the Persona series at large was pretty good when it came to UI design, even as far back as the first game. But to keep things from getting too long, we'll start at 3, since that's where they really started to have more of a distinct style to themselves, in my opinion. The UI in this game is definitely not peak design by any stretch of the imagination, but it does have little nuggets of personality that I really like. This was the first game to establish the primary color trend. This is the most apparent in the game's main menu. I love the way this looks. It's simple and pretty minimalist, but the color palette is very pleasing to look at. 
I'm pretty sure a guy made a trilogy of videos talking about Persona's color theory or whatever if you want to watch those. I'm a big fan of the slow moving objects and silhouettes in the background. The color palette of this game consists of a cerulean accented with a much darker blue and a light sky blue, with a hint of yellow to make it pop a little. It may not be as flashy as Persona 5's, but literally just looking at this menu fills me with nostalgic feelings for this game. I mean, the first time I played this game was in 2017, so it hasn't been that long, but whatever. Then you've got the battle interface, probably the simplest of the Persona games, I must say. The command menu wheel might look a bit awkward and kinda silly, but you get used to it pretty quickly. If you didn't notice within the first two minutes of the game, the evokers you summon your personas with are shaped like guns! Whoa! And that's the moment you realize, wait, the command menu is literally a gun cylinder. Damn. Specifically, a revolver. Unfortunately, the evokers are not based on revolvers, so it still doesn't completely make sense. Missed opportunity from a symbolic standpoint. The cursor for selecting targets looks like, well, a target marker. You know, a crosshair. Despite the simplicity, it's actually quite user-friendly once you know all the button shortcuts. You can press circle to reset the cursor back to the attack command, and square to instantly skip your turn. Once you get used to it, it actually becomes the second fastest menu to navigate, Persona 5 being the fastest. Holding R1 lets you see the entire turn order for the cycle allowing you to properly predict actions and set tactics for your allies accordingly. Pressing L1 lets you tell your navigator to analyze an enemy. The HP and SP displays are out of the way to the side instead of boxes like in most RPGs. And the profile shots of the characters are pretty cool. I like the little emoticons indicating the character's condition, it's cute. The font choice for the damage text just looks weird. What an odd choice and the rush command can be kinda sticky at times. Of course, most of the emphasis of this game's combat comes more from what's going on on screen, or the really trippy backgrounds that I adore, so I don't really mind the more subtle approach in this game. Another subtle but really cool detail is specifically during the dark hour. There's a little bit of a distortion effect, and you can actually see this effect the HUD, text boxes, and character portraits a little bit. This was also a thing in Nocturne, but there isn't much else to say about the UI in that game to be quite honest, so I figured I would just stick it in here for this part of the video. That being said, the text boxes and HUD in the top right corner look very rough and low budget. Considering how this game is 50% social sim, you're gonna be looking at the dialogue boxes a lot like, even more than most RPGs, so having these fugly looking text boxes isn't doing you any favors. The shop menus aren't really anything too special either. They added the option to immediately equip something after you buy it, which is pretty nice, but they take away the feature from Persona 2 that lets you select everything you want at once before buying. Why would you do that? Yes, believe it or not, I am capable of criticizing the games I like. As much as I've always preferred Persona 3 Fests over Portable, I actually think the HUD and text boxes look much better in the Portable version. Persona 3 Portable is a straight-up visual novel, so you end up looking at even more text boxes, since now they sometimes have to describe what's going on around you with text. The only downgrade is the navigator portrait in battle. I preferred the pseudo-computer screen look and the more Thought Bubble-esque dialogue bubbles. I never really took much of an issue with the visual novel style of Persona 3 Portable, but for some reason, people complain about it a lot, all the while praising whatever the hell this shit is. I also love the pink aesthetic they gave to the female protagonist, as opposed to the protagonist's blue color palette. But hey, we wouldn't have Portable and its nice UI improvements if it wasn't for the success of Persona 4. This is the game that inspired me to make this video. People praise Persona 5's UI to the moon and back, but I rarely hear enough people talk about Persona 4 style. While 3's battle interface was very loosely based around guns, Persona 4's entire aesthetic 
is based around two things, CRTVs and the color yellow. The HUD and text boxes resemble little weather widgets you'd see on a weather channel. Aside from the color yellow, you'll notice a lot of colorful stripes. On the options menu, you can also see an audio visualizer, which is pretty sweet. The sub-menus resemble the old TV option menus. One really nice thing that Persona 4 added, that would eventually be added to Persona 3 Portable as well, is a rank up gauge for social links. It's better than the constant I am thou text after every rank like in 3 Fess. Most importantly, we have the battle interface. First off, there's the TV filter, which is really appreciated with the game's aesthetic and all. The battle menu resembles an old TV turn dial. You can't see the entire turn cycle anymore though, you can only see who's immediately after you. Yeah, I'm starting to notice a pattern here, Atlas really likes removing features that nobody complained about. Most of everything else, from the battle portraits to the analysis menus, take after Persona 3, which is fine. The battle transition resembles more of a TV show transition, which is pretty cool. Finally, the shop menus. They've definitely received an upgrade. You can now easily toggle between characters when buying equipment for them. Not only does the feature to equip newly purchased equipment return, but you can also immediately sell the old equipment you just replaced. They still didn't bring back the Persona 2 shopping system for the regular item shop though. While I've always preferred Persona 3 over 4, I will admit that 4 does a good job improving user-friendliness and implements a lot more of the aesthetic that it's trying to give off in its interface. It also has a much more varied color palette while maintaining a focus mostly on its primary color. A lot of people complain the colors are too bright in Persona 4 Golden, especially the PC version, but if you turn the contrast all the way down, it'll resemble the original game's tones more. While none of the other Persona games' aesthetics are nearly as animated or expressive as Persona 5's, I think it's a crime that people aren't at least acknowledging Persona 4's. The UI and HUD design in 4 has probably aged the best out of the games that came before 5. But what about other Mega 10 spin-offs? Can they even compete with the likes of Mainline or Persona? There are a few spin-offs I could talk about, but the one that stands out to me the most personally has got to be Digital Devil Saga. So I've been playing through this game for the first time, and honestly, it's becoming one of my favorite Mega 10 games. But that's a discussion for another time. Let's just focus on the UI. The menus look very modernized. The traditional press turn icons are replaced with hexagons, but they alternate a little because that's just how their sides line up. It actually looks very tidy. The HP bars resemble pulse lines, while the MP bars resemble... I, I don't know... A polygraph? So many pleasing shapes here and there. I love the character panels on the pause menu displaying each character's Atma brand next to them. Sure, you can definitely tell it was built off a of Nocturne, but it does a great job distinguishing itself compared to the other games. Also, characters don't have a billion resistances or weaknesses, so you don't have any long lines of text going across the screen. Can I also point out that this game has an option to reorder your currently equipped skills? Kinda weird how not every game after this one even has that feature. The XP bars are nicely colored with a nice sheen effect, which makes watching them fill up so satisfying to look at. As for the HUD, it's about the same as any other Mega 10 game really, just the moon phase basically. Oh, no, wait. No, this game doesn't have moon phases, it has solar phases. It kinda baffles me that behind this game's plain box art is some pretty kick-ass design. And also one of the best games ever made, but let's not get into that right now. But wait! Why haven't you brought up SMT5 yet? It's really quite simple. Firstly, I haven't played SMT5 yet. I can't really say anything about how it feels to navigate through the menus and shit. I have, however, seen the entire game, basically. So, what I can comment on is how it looks. It looks plain and boring. I guess the animated background on the text boxes is kinda cool, but the text boxes themselves are so generically crafted. 
You've got the most bland font choices ever. You've got mostly rectangles and circles, but on occasion, you might see a rounded rectangle. Daring today, aren't we? The press turn icons look like stock royalty free icons, but hey, I'm just talking about a bunch of menus and symbols. I'm not here to judge the quality of a game I haven't played yet, so what I'm saying here isn't reflective at all of how I feel about the game itself. We'll cross that road when we get to it. My god, I can't believe I just wrote four and a half pages talking about something as simple as an interface. This was supposed to be a short video to shove between now and my next big project, since my longer videos take a lot more time to make and often have very little payoff. But hey, I'm not going to complain about giving the proper amount of time to appreciate game aesthetics. It's one of the most important things you'll ever talk about. Up there with what color is the dress and the pineapple on pizza discussion. I'm fucking tired right now. Just, just end the video.